We had a bit of a rough start this morning. So I think I explained that originally our intention was to leave and stop at a Ford dealership to swap out the bed cover because we got the wrong one. Um, I wound up having a nightmare at this dealership. It's not the dealership that I got the truck from, but essentially they wouldn't take the one that I got from them back because it didn't have a box, even though they didn't give me the box. And on top of that, they said that they didn't have it when I knew it was there and they just kind of like looked around and were like, nah. But this really nice man, I wish I got his name and could have given him some sort of like shout out. Gave me a hand and let me like throw it in the back of his truck and we like got to go around the building and swapped him out. So I'm good now, but what we wanted to be leaving that dealership around 10.30 and we ended up leaving more like one, so we have a late start. It's been really stressful towing. I didn't put the load distribution bars on yet and I think there's a little bit too much tongue weight. Even though that wouldn't explain why it's swaying, the trailer's swaying a bit, it's windy, it's raining, it's storming. And now we just hit traffic, so I've had an opportunity to pull out the camera. There's about 90 minutes of dead stop traffic. The GPS said to get off, but we didn't listen because we're silly. Truck kills it with towing the weight. It's just not the most stable thing in the world. Nicole uh, has been learning as a spotter to help me back up in parking lots. So let's just say the, the Ford parking lot was a bit of a nightmare. Got good music and uh, thankfully, because this thing is gonna be a pain in the butt to go anywhere and park. So thankfully, I got us a cooler and we filled it with ice and drinks and we got tons of foods, tons of snack, PB and J's fruit and everything so that'll make it a lot easier and we only have to stop for gas and to pee. I thought I was gonna leave this trailer at my dad's house when I'm in Connecticut but uh, there's absolutely no way that I'm gonna be able to turn on those narrow roads so I have no idea where I'm gonna put it so comment below if you can let me leave my trailer at your mom's house. I feel so cool going to truck stops and hanging out with all my new truck friends. Respectful. Look at all my truck friends. This trucker guy, I don't know where he is. All my trucker friends. How do you feel being a trucker, Nicole? I feel at home. You need a trucker hat. <laughs> oh, we're so trucky. We probably look like such yuppies rolling up in a new F-250 with like a race car trailer, but yeah. it's okay. All right, so we've been at this truck stop for quite some time. I installed the load distribution bars on the truck that hopefully help it from swaying a little bit. I also moved the 240 a little bit more forward. So I'm hoping that'll kind of get rid of the pendulum effect because I guess when you have the weight too far back from the rear axles, it'll start to sway and keep going. These load distribution bars just kind of pop in here. It's a really cool hitch that I actually got that came with the kit. And then there's little brackets that bolt here. And the chain kind of holds weight. So the best way to kind of explain what it does is imagine like a little man just like pulling this up to kind of bring the back end of the truck up and just spread the load. I actually have something specifically for like sway control, but I couldn't find all the parts for it. So that's gonna have to wait. Um, I also added 10 PSI in all the trailer tires because they were a little low. I'm hoping that'll be good. We're like super behind schedule. We are only in Georgia still. And we're supposed to be like south of the border already. So we're doing the best we can. Are you ready, Nicole? Isn't south of the border just South Carolina? Uh, it's the South Carolina, North Carolina border, and South Carolina is a big state. Oh no. Oh yeah. Before it literally looked like I, before it actually looked like I was one of those drivers <laughs> from the middle of a movie where my hand's going back and forth on the wheel because I was just trying to correct the trailer from swaying so much. And the car is perfectly straight now, so I can let go of the wheel, which I'm obviously not going to do, but, and oh my god, is it so much better. Before, I was like on my toes while I was driving, and I didn't really know better because this is my first time ever towing anything, so I didn't know if I was, it, it was just supposed to be like that, and I just sucked, but apparently, it's good now. Thanks. The biggest negative that I thought of having a black trailer would be the uh, heat inside the trailer, but I just found out that it isn't the heat but the fact that it shows scratches. I just noticed on my brand new fancy trailer, there are scratches all the way down the side. And the worst thing is, I'm 99% sure that it's from when this morning I stopped at the house to grab all the stuff. I think literally like where I am on the road, there's a tree that overhangs on the road and there's no way to go around it unless I block the whole road, which really sucks. I guess I have to pay more attention for that, but. I mean, maybe some of them will buff out. I don't even know if you can buff this, whatever this material is. I don't know if it's paint or... There's some like pretty deep gouges. Definitely bummed, but you live and you learn, I guess. I don't know. At least it's not the truck. It, I mean, it happened, it, like Nicole said, it had to happen eventually. Yeah. 
Anyway, we are almost at south of the border, and then I don't know. We're just I'm feeling it right now. The truck feels good. I'm energized, so we're just gonna keep driving. South of the border. I really wanted a photo of the truck with the trailer underneath that big sign the guy with the 240. But uh, yeah, we're, we're on a roll right I just want to ride the Sombrero, Adam. Maybe on our way down. I don't think it's a ride. I think you just go up to the top. I want to go up it. You just look at stuff. South of the border! Almost 1 a.m. So that means we are in North Carolina. No. That does not mean we're in North Carolina, Nicole. <laughs> I mean, it happens at 1 a.m. that we're going to North Carolina. And I, I just want to assure you guys that at 1 a.m. every single night, we are not in North Carolina. No, I'm just saying south of the border means that we're about to cross into North Carolina. Correlation does not imply causation. <laughs> so we are halfway through North Carolina. Oh my God, what a nightmare trying to find a freaking hotel. Yes, the first four hotels, or five, were out of room. So we are in Comfort Inn, and anyway, the parking lot is completely full except for the back area. So we were all the way down there trying to back it in, back it up and everything. Guys, this, this trailer is no joke. So then we finally, I was spotting over there and Adam was backing up. So we're just gonna drop it right here and just park the truck somewhere else and just know that those cars can just drive in front. But Adam, I was backing it up a little bit too fast for my hand movement. And let's just say, this bush used to be nice and rounded in the front, and he completely like straight up smushed it all the way back, and it came back, and now it's all flat. But you know what, we made it safely, and it's about 3 a.m. None of the lights on the trailer were working, or the brake lights, while we were driving, and Adam's inside, and he just found out that we blew a fuse on we blew a fuse on the trailer battery, or the trailer battery fuse. We blew a trailer battery fuse. So, it's a giant one, and it's 3 a.m. So we don't know what we're gonna do right now. This wasn't working. Well, believe it or not, this fancy, expensive, very, very nice trailer does not come with any extra fuses. It has nothing to do with the trailer. It's just a crappy fuse, and... We checked the generator and the generator doesn't have a fuse and we checked under the hood of the truck and none of the fuses match. So now we're going to have to drive with a trailer that doesn't have lights to Walmart and get one there and then drive back and have to do all this freaking maneuvering again into the parking spot. So thank God for subwoofers because literally I, I, I had this flash in my head and I remember that I had the exact same size fuse in my car for that little subwoofer that we wired. So if it wasn't for that, who knows what would have happened, but we're good now, we're golden. <laughs> did you tell them what time it is? Yeah. I hate thieves, they make my life so difficult. What I basically did, since I had to like kind of park next to the trailer, I just wedged the truck up against the trailer really tight, so it'd be very difficult for someone to get it out. And I got a hitch lock, and I, well I guess I shouldn't tell you all the things that I did in case you want to steal my trailer, but there's other theft prevention too, so. <laughs> Day two, now we're starting in Dunn, North Carolina. Uh, we made it about halfway into the state, I think somewhere around the halfway mark. This parking lot was full with cars last night, and this is where I had to figure out how to back around the trailer, and somehow I got in one of these spots along with the truck. But I'm gonna go help Nicole with the suitcases, because we're those type of people that stays one night in a hotel and has like 5,000 suitcases. But, it's okay. Explain yourself. I need to be organized, so I have my clothes in there, and my toiletries in there, my makeup and my other toiletries in here. Hey, I have to pack toiletries for both of us, and my other suitcase has my shoes. My toiletries are in my suitcase. I should probably hit the button, otherwise we're going to stay in here for a really long time. I just realized I haven't brought this up in any videos yet, but the whole reason why we're in such a rush and such a deadline with like getting the truck and the trailer and driving straight through, there's an event in New Hampshire at Canaan that's supposed to be like a crazy fun track. So I kind of made that our deadline for getting up north, and we're actually going to end up driving straight there. I wanted to do a really chill trip, make it a bunch of stops at the skate parks and stuff, but we're just going to go straight up there, and then we'll just kind of bounce around and do cool stuff after that. One of those goes back here. Which one? Really bummed about these scratches. So sad. Ideally, I'd still like to be able to move my car more up, but the tow hooks are literally like right there. So I, I can't really move that much farther forward unless I maybe 
tied down to the e-tracks or put more anchors here or something. It's kind of weird that the way they would build the trailer, they would have it made so the car should go so far back, but maybe they just assume people will be putting like a four-wheeler or something else heavy in front to kind of offset the load. It already feels so refreshing to be out of the Florida humidity. It's just a nice cool morning here. I was sitting out on the tailgate sipping my coffee. This is great. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty agricultural, doesn't it? These truck stops make getting gas so easy. I know. I love the pumps on both sides. You know, so you don't even have to choose. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Pick so whichever. Pick whichever one you want. Our luck has not been the best today. Uh, we tried to get from North Carolina to Connecticut. We were going to stay at my mom's house today, and that's still the plan. But the first issue we had, Nicole had to go to the bathroom really bad and she looked up on this Waze app that we've been using that's actually really good. And it took us off like in the middle of the countryside to go to like a, a porta potty and just crazy out of the way, like a half hour driving on these like one lane mountain roads. I was petrified that I was gonna collide with someone coming around the corner. So I would just like kind of toot the horn and hope no one was coming. There's so many corners, turns, hills, low trees. It was sketchy. Thankfully, we didn't hit anybody. I don't know what you're supposed to do in that situation. I'm hoping honking the horn works. And then, uh, yeah, we got back on the highway, started rolling again, and I realized my trailer lights aren't working. Um, I don't remember if I said in the, I think I already explained to you guys how I replaced that fuse with the fuse out of my 240. Well, I replaced the 30 amp with 100 amp, and I should have fixed it sooner because it blew the fuses for the trailer lights in the truck and we don't have any. So now we need three fuses at least. Yeah, we need we need a lot of fuses and we have none, no fuses. So we're, we're going to a truck stop, we're cruising with the hazards on because at least we have brake lights and turning signals, otherwise it'd be extra sketchy. So that is uh, kind of where we're at. Um, I, I was gonna talk about the truck a little bit, but I kind of want to resolve the situation and then we'll go a little bit more in depth on kind of things that I like and don't like about the truck this far. trailer lights to work. Ford, uh, clever Mr. Ford, uses a very small, like smaller than a mini fuse. So what I had to do was buy a mini fuse from uh, the truck stop and I was able to actually like bend the prongs to make it fit in the mini, mini Ford fuse slot. So we're good. We got trailer lights. We're cruising. Uh, we're way off schedule and we're not going to get much sleep for tomorrow's drift event. But America! I'm predicting that blue lights are about to go on. Caution, red light camera ahead. Is he behind us? 309 and we finally made it home. <laughs> this has been an unforgettable experience. It's life changing. Uh, I don't know how we're still alive right now. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't just completely have like a panic attack. Um, I'm gonna go into detail tomorrow because I think we need to get up in like four hours So this is gonna be another time where I'm extremely tired Coincidentally last time I saw the Haggard guys because they're actually gonna be at this event I was also extremely tired from the 1J swap, so they're probably gonna think that I'm always a zombie, but Is that true Nicole? <laughs> All the roads seem so small with such a large truck, but boy here and then turbo spool up that hill though it's sick, Guys, though. please, not even for your comfort, but for the comfort of like trailer drivers or truck drivers, please, when you see them, either A, don't merge right in front of them because it takes a long time to break, or B, if you're passing us going in the opposite direction on the same road, don't speed by us because our trailer, like... <laughs> well, hopefully all trailers aren't like that, but preacher girl about the merging in front of us. Yeah, so... She's learning. Uh, she, she's a truck girl now. I... I had a little bit of a break. Let's now. go to let's go to bed, please. This is an Amazon Prime truck. Look how. Wait, no, that's an Amazon Prime truck. Yes, that's what I'm showing you. This looks sick. That's like gnarly. Gets a diesel. Compliments every truck they see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's it going, Adam? Uh, it's okay. Um, how much hour sleep did we get? I, I, got, I got two. Th you I got, got three. Three. Nicole got two. She just said that though, so you already know that. Um, we got a story to tell you, but I'm gonna wait until I'm out of this sketchy downhill with people merging in front of me. Quick public service announcement. I just want to put out there, if you are one of those guys that tailgates to, you know, the, the car's going slow in front of you, I understand. I, I'm not an advocate of it, 
but you have to understand, if someone has a trailer and you're doing that to them, they can't see you. I'm going the same speed as traffic, but people see a car gap in front because I'm trying to give myself room to brake. And they keep just riding my butt, and then they disappear. And then, do they even exist? I don't know. <laughs> hey, first drift car spotted. Hell yeah. All right, so story time. Um, yesterday, I said there was a lot of sketchy stuff that happened. So the first sketchy thing that happened, uh, right in front of us, there was a bus that just merged into a tractor trailer. Like that. That's the same sound it made. And the mirror went flying off. The bus like kind of went off the road, didn't crash. And the mirror like bounced underneath the truck. And I got really sketched out because that's when we started smelling something burning. So I thought maybe I like popped a tire or something. Um, but that ended up being the fuses that burnt out, totally unrelated. So the next sketchy thing, we were using the Waze app, which we enjoy. However, not ideal for a truck. Um, I've driven through New York City so many times and I always prefer to go up in New Jersey and take the Tap and Z over to Connecticut. But the George Washington's always faster, so sometimes I'll just be like, ah, you know, whatever. And it never ends well. So we wound up on the Hutch, or what I think was pretty much the Hutch, some parkway. It was some parkway, and on these parkways, you're not supposed to have trucks. And I knew that. There was a clear sign that said, uh, what did it say? Passenger vehicles only. But I remember going into New York City with my dad and his boat on his trailer, and my dad's the type of guy that'll just be like, you know what, whatever, let's just go for it, like, we'll be fine. There's some low underpasses, uh, but I, he was fine with the boat. However, us, mm, anyway, my dad always just risks it, and if he gets pulled over, he just plays dumb, like, oh, I didn't know any better. So I was like, yeah, I'll do the same. The underpasses were sketchy. I knew the height of the trailer was like eight feet eight, but the underpasses arc. So if you're in the wrong lane, I will totally total my trailer. Pardon the cliche, total, total. Total, total, total. So we had to drive in the middle of the arch sometime. Yeah. And go in the middle of two lanes. It was really dumb. And I, I was like petrified, I was shaking, I was so anxious, that's why I wasn't filming. Uh, Nicole was freaking out. And we ended up passing a cop, who of course then followed us and proceeded to pull us over. And I was like, ah. Uh. Because we're, we're in the middle of the Bronx. I'm like, what are we going to do? I, uh, I just, it sucked. Luckily, some car, well, not luckily, hopefully it was okay, started driving the wrong way on the highway somewhere, and the cop had to leave to go deal with that. So we were good, but he said that we had to basically drive through the Bronx, and it was really sketchy. It was like a really narrow road with cars parked on the side yeah it, it basically new york city it was very very sketchy so we wound up somehow coming in contact with another cop this guy was really cool not that the other guy was uncool he told us that we could take this road called 22 so we took a road called 22 found 95 and then made the shot home um we got home really late and we don't have a lot of sleep but i'm really excited to drive this track it's a two-day event so we'll be here tomorrow as well although i think i'm going to make that a separate video so uh, I have to pee very badly, but I want to get there early. Um, if I get there a little bit late, I'll probably look like a complete imbecile not knowing how to back... Oh, oh I have to pee. Mute it. Not knowing how to back up a trailer. Well, uh, a lot of you guys have been asking what radar detector I have. It's a Passport 9500iX. Um, I don't really have experience with much else. I just know comparing it to the Valentine 1, it had better reviews that it had less false alarms and it has saved me quite a few times. Yep. Although the Waze app is nice because it it's like a um, information sharing system. So like other drivers will tell you if there's a cop on the road. So that's also been very helpful in us avoiding cops. Although we're not really speeding because we have a trailer on the back. One other thing that a lot of you guys have been asking that are from other countries and stuff. No, you don't need any sort of license to be towing a trailer. You don't need to pass any training. If you're stupid enough to buy a long trailer, you're stupid enough to drive it, you can drive it. Uh, some states have license requirements. If it's a commercial vehicle, I don't really know the full details. I know there's a certain length maybe or a certain weight at which you need one, but I know that we are under that. However, I do think that you should have to take some sort of course because it's sketchy. One thing, I don't know if this is right, whenever I pass the tractor trailer, I kind of hang to the left if I'm passing him on the left to give him more space and I might put my front truck wheel on the yellow line. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. I like just giving them space, but it's kind of sketchy. So that's, that's story time with Adam and Nicole. Uh, <laughs> I'll touch back to you guys when we go to the bathroom and get to the track. 
I think we're in Vermont now. We're headed to Canaan, New Hampshire. It's about three and a half hours from my mom's house. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, can you pull that thing up? You just gotta do this. Adam has to pull up on ramps with the truck so that way he doesn't scrape the 240. Just obviously line him up when I come out because it's probably not going to be straight. Straight back, you're good. Yep. Woohoo! Wow, you're still scraped. But you're, you're not even that low. What? Surprise, you're not that low. so pretty I love it same spot as the last one I filmed but I just think this 240 is so beautiful and the sleepy eyes are so cute and I love the hood and oh I just love the color so much it's so freaking beautiful are you good
to the track. Saw this guy here. Oh, you're vlogging now. Yeah, I've been lazy. My, well, not lazy. My car was just stressing me out because I thought my clutch was slipping. So I switched to less grippy tires to hopefully kind of alleviate that problem. Rebled the coolant because it seemed like it was overheating a little bit, but I feel like there, there's always issues, you know? We only had the most unattractive time. Uh, you're, just, you're just having to be standing in front of the car. The trailer's working great. It's really nice just being able to go in and access tools and stuff. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do in terms of footage. I guess I'm gonna put a, I'll put a helmet camera on and then tomorrow I'll probably do that thing that you guys liked in Japan where I had the uh, mic'd engine bay, mic'd everything. Um, today, we only have like an hour left of track time, so I'm just gonna try to focus on really getting used to the track so I can probably tandem and party with people tomorrow. All right, since I knew you guys liked it last time, I got the chin mount GoPro set up. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better in my car than the JZX since I sit a little bit higher in the seat. So hopefully you guys will be able to see over the dash. I don't know though, it looks pretty low. Do you agree, Nicole? It's low, I can see behind it if you just jump set how you're going to. I see chin mount helmet camera in my car hopefully it should be a little bit better than my cresta in japan because i'm sitting a little bit higher up in this car where in the cresta i sat really low so i'm hoping you guys actually be able to see stuff this time uh anyway we kind of got comfortable with the track a little weird i have to use second more than i'd like i'd like to be using third but oh, what, your clutch is slipping? yeah
dedicated we are to getting these clips that I borrowed um whoo, that was good I borrowed one of the Haggard's uh, media jackets or someone's media jacket I just borrowed a we do that I borrowed a neon jacket to show that I'm part of media which means I could go under a rope and get closer to the action <laughs> absolutely beating the crap out of my car. I've been beating the crap out of my car. I never do this many hot laps, so I'm, I'm really happy with the new cooling setup. Uh, however, there's a lot of other stuff that gets more agitated when I'm hot lapping so much, so since the session's over for the day at five, I'm gonna kinda go through the car, just check for any leaks, check for anything that's burnt, lift the front end up, check for any loose suspension play, tire wear, etc. So, play safe. My clutch slipping might actually be because of oil getting in there. Oh boy. Oh boy. Looks like we might be dropping the transmission. Rear main seal? Possibly. Good thing we got a shot. Yeah. My shot. Um, look how cool this is. I'm I'm really happy that I have a trailer now. This is sick. We got we got everything. Been loaning tools to Haggard all day. They're over here chilling. I'm super psyched on this though. This is our little sleeping setup inside the trailer. So cool. Way easier than setting up a tent. Drew, what do you think of this? Freaking lit. Absolutely. 10 out of 10. Look at this. First time I've ever seen this. Two what? person sleeping back. You gotta get closer. I'm Shut zooming. Up. Oh, are you? Yeah. Two people. Never seen that before. Amazon.com. New Hampshire's great. We're going to a restaurant called 56 on Main Street. We had a hard time finding it, but then we realized that it was literally 56 Main Street. Who yeah. would have thought? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we passed Mickey's, what, we passed the two churches. <laughs> a car full of intelligent people. Steph just drove through this grass uh, embankment and off the curb with her car because we missed the Dollar General. We need to go get uh, milk for Nicole's cereal. He needs some milk. <laughs> hey, I'll just say, Jimmy, though, you shouldn't use that for your roll cage. You should use the SFI foam because if you get in an accident, that's going to do nothing. Okay, I didn't know if you actually knew that. I wish there was a wall so I could <laughs> Drew's like, wait, what? Pool noodles won't protect me? <laughs> what? Yeah, one of my buddies actually, um, he just picked up a 180SX, like a real one. Uh -huh. He brought it to my shop, and I was like, wow, dude, you have some thick piping on that cage. It looked like he had, like, literally fence piping on his cage, but it was just, like, a really, really smooth pull noodle. So it looked like, it looked like <laughs> yeah, no, no, I've seen that before. The whole cage looked like it was, like, this thick, and yeah. I was like, damn. Guys, I'm really sorry that the daily uploads have been so all over the place. Uh, I'm doing my absolute best, but it's really difficult driving across the country and putting up videos every single day. So I really hope that you enjoyed this extra long video. I don't know that I'll have one up tomorrow, but I promise the one after that will be another great drift event at this track. Give me some input on what you'd like to see. Nicole's sleeping right now, so I gotta be kind of quiet. But uh, I'm gonna finish editing my little editing chair, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. Could not be doing any of this without you guys. This really is the dream. Later, guys. Like